Today I'm sharing with you guys how you can put together this first aid kit for under $30 using items from the Dollar Tree. Hey guys, it's Jen and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. I thought it would be fun today to share with you guys how you can put together a first aid kit for around $30 using just items from the Dollar Tree. And since we are doing budget themed videos this week, I thought it would be the perfect chance. So one of the things that I learned, not just when I moved out on my own before I had kids, but especially after I had kids, was to always keep a stock of over-the-counter meds and first aid supplies in my house. Why? because when you are sick or injured the last thing you want to do is be running to Walgreens to treat your cough or your fever or your burn or your scrape or anything like that. Before I show you what's in the kit I just want to mention that none of what I'm telling you guys today is medical advice. Please always check with your doctor or your healthcare provider before you take any over-the-counter medications and if you are in an emergency situation then you should definitely seek treatment. Just a little bit of background about myself. I have been a nurse for 15 years and I've also been a mom for almost 13 years now so I'm going to share with you what I found at the Dollar Tree what I wasn't able to find at the Dollar Tree what I use these things for in my own home and there will also be a list of items down below if you'd like to reference that as well and build your own kit down in the description box below you guys will find a link if you go to that and put in your email address you can get this handy dandy first aid printable emailed to you that you can use to build your own kit if you don't receive it in about five to ten minutes just make sure to check your spam folder okay so like i said you can put this kit together for around thirty dollars with things that you can get at your local dollar tree now i do want to say that you obviously don't need the container if you have something already like this at home that you can put it in but i just wanted to share with you that if you are trying to build from scratch this is a good idea to kind of keep everything contained so this is actually, I believe, a dish tub from the storage aisle. There were a couple different storage options, and I thought that this was the one that worked the best. And then these are actually food storage containers. There come uh, four of them in a package for $1, and I like them because they're clear so you can see what's inside them. And then I did label them, so I'll kind of go through and share with you how I divided everything out and what's in the kit. Uh, Adam was actually asking me about, he's like, is this a first aid kit? Because why are there medications in here? And I was like, yeah, you know, I call it a first aid kit, but in reality, to me, first aid also includes over-the-counter medications that you might keep inside your house as well, because like I said, you don't want to be caught off guard, especially when you have kids. <laughs> when you get sick, it's always unexpected and it's better to have these things on hand especially since you know they're from the Dollar Tree they're inexpensive to begin with okay so the first thing that everyone needs is a thermometer now I will tell you I was not able to find a thermometer at my Dollar Tree you guys can let me know if you've been able to find one at your Dollar Tree I know at one time they had them and that might have been pre pandemic so that's really the only thing in this kit that I wasn't able to get there this is just a thermometer that I have here at home just to show you guys as an example I personally prefer oral thermometers. I do not prefer the temporal thermometers. Um, I do know that the most accurate temperature in kids is normally an oral temp, so that's what I prefer to take. Actually, it's rectal, but we usually don't go around <laughs> taking rectal temps outside of the hospital. However, you can get one of these at Walmart or on Amazon. Um, the one that I looked up at my Walmart was around $10. You can get them cheaper on Amazon. I did find one on Amazon for around $6 or $7, so I'll link that down below. But definitely don't be caught without a thermometer. I know that at the beginning of the pandemic, it was actually very difficult to find thermometers in the store. And in fact, when I was still working in the hospital and the COVID call center, I talked to so many patients on the phone that did not have a thermometer in their house. And so when we'd be screening them and asking them questions, they weren't even able to tell us if they had a fever or not because they didn't have a thermometer. Um, I think that now thermometers are more widely available, but it's always great to have one. And also a tip is I would recommend not only keeping a thermometer, but also a spare battery. Okay, the next item that I found at Dollar Tree were these alcohol prep pads. I personally only use these for my thermometer. So I think that a box of 100 of these is fantastic for a dollar. Um, I don't actually use these for any other use than to clean my thermometer. So what I'll do is after I use this on you know, myself or the kids, 
I'll take an alcohol pad and I'll wipe the tip of the thermometer off, let it dry and put it back in the sleeve and put it back in the drawer. I have heard people using these on bug bites and things like that. Personally, I've never done that, but I think these alcohol pads are a great value and awesome to keep in your first aid kit. Okay, next up is hand sanitizer. I personally think that this is a good thing to keep because especially if you're gonna carry this to a different area of the house to take care of someone and you don't have access to a sink, I think it's great to be able to sanitize your hands. Again, this is something that's optional, but I think that it is definitely something that can be useful in a kit like this. I was also able to find an ice pack. This is actually one that you screw off the top and put ice in yourself. I like these because you can use them over and over and over again. I actually found one there also that was in kind of like the food section that was more of a lunchbox ice pack. And those kinds of ice packs freeze solid and I would not recommend putting them in your first aid kit. Something like this with a soft exterior. Um, if you need to give it to your kid to put it on a burn or maybe they bump their head or something like that, something like this is much more comfortable for them to use. And if you always have ice in your freezer, it's super easy just to fill up with ice or you can fill it up with cold water and ice and give them a cold pack. Okay, the next section we have here is for cough and cold. So I labeled the container as such. In here I have both NyQuil and DayQuil. Um, obviously the generic brands. The DayQuil is an orange color and the NyQuil is a green color. Be sure that you look at the labels at the medications at the Dollar Tree or anywhere for that matter. A lot of times they'll be labeled as different things but they're actually the same medication. I would not recommend taking the medications out of this original packaging. As you can see, I did take most of the things out of their boxes just so I had room in this kit. However, I would not, I do not and would not recommend removing these capsules from the packaging and putting them into another container unless it's very clearly labeled because obviously you don't want to have just like miscellaneous pills in a bottle and you'd have no idea what they are. So you can see that in the, these particular caplets are the um, Dayquil. They have Tylenol in them. They also have a cough suppressant and phenylephrine. Again, if you're gonna take it out of the box, just make sure that you look up online what the dosage is and the frequency so that you're not taking too many. Um, and then these are the nighttime ones that are the green. So these actually have doxolamine in them, which is a sleep aid. So those are in that container. Now, the only thing too is about the Dollar Tree is that they have less of a variety when it comes to forms of medications. For example, I usually prefer to keep liquid DayQuil and NyQuil at my house, but if I was looking to do things on a budget, I would have no problem getting these instead. If you go to Walmart and do it, you're gonna be able to get a better um, variety of medications. And then in the bottom here, I have some Hall's cough drops. I always recommend keeping these on hand because you never know when someone's gonna get a cough or a sore throat. And personally, I don't think that this is a terrific deal. You don't get very many in this bag for a dollar. However, they are brand names, so that's nice. And they are individually wrapped. So if they end up staying in here for a while, you know how cough drops can get kind of gummy <laughs> um, if they've sat for a while, at least if they're individually wrapped, you know, they won't be all together in one big ball and you'll still be able to use them. The next little container that I have here is just labeled bandages. And so in here, I do have some regular size band-aids. That's important to keep on hand. I also like to keep triple antibiotic ointment on hand. This is um, the generic version of Neosporin. I personally like to put this on cuts and scrapes. Uh, one thing that I did not include in this first aid kit is hydrogen peroxide. I know that is an old school method of, you know, pouring peroxide on scrapes and cuts. That's what we all used to have when we were kids. Um, that's actually not recommended to do that anymore. It's just recommended to wash cuts and scrapes with like a very mild soap and cool water. So that's normally what I do. And then I would just apply gauze or a band-aid with some of this triple antibiotic ointment on it. On it. Um, I also was able to find a roll, a three inch roll of gauze at the Dollar Tree, which was nice. Something like this is nice if your kid gets a larger scrape. Um, what you can do then is use some of these gauze pads. And these are three, I'm sorry, these are two by twos. Um, which means two inch by two inch um, in the medical field. We use four by fours a lot, which are dressings that are four inches by four inches. If you go to Walmart, you can actually find four by fours, but if you're just building, you know, 
um, a very modest first aid kit. I think these would work just fine, especially if you have something like on a knee or an elbow or even something that's bleeding a little bit heavier than you would use a Band-Aid for. You could use some of these gauze pads and then wrap the bandage around that. I did not find any bandage tape at the Dollar Tree, so that's something that I would also probably recommend keeping in here. You can find that either online or at Walmart. And then another thing I like to keep on hand are these large Band-Aids. I love these and I always get them from the Dollar Tree. They're the Curad brand and they're quite big. Let me open one so I can show it to you. So you can see how big these Band-Aids are, or bandages are, um, just with the size of my hand. These are fantastic for scraped knees. I can't tell you how many times my kids have fallen off their bike or their skateboard or you know just fallen playing basketball and scrape their knee and these are fantastic you can just clean up the cut um, apply some triple antibiotic ointment and put this band-aid on and it works great so that is that container the next little container we have here is kind of a mishmash it's got some topical uh, creams in it along with some eye uh, treatments and oral treatments so I was able to find some Aura Gel, or actually it's just oral analgesic gel at Dollar Tree. This is something that I learned the hard way, um, not having it on hand, especially when my kids were younger and they were teething. Um, I always think it's nice to keep this on hand too. Like if you have a kid or even if you, like your wisdom teeth start coming in, that is super, <laughs> super painful. Anytime you have like maybe a burn on your tongue or a toothache, it's really nice to have this on hand and just have it at home to be able to use until you can get to the dentist. And the active ingredient in this is just benzocaine, so it's basically just a numbing agent, um, but that is something I would recommend having. And then um, in addition, I was also able to find hydrocortisone cream at um, Dollar Tree. This is the 1% hydrocortisone cream, but I would recommend keeping this on hand for uh, bug bites or itches. Um, sometimes kids, well, a lot of times kids will get bug bites or have an itchy spot. Um, this is great for that. Highly recommend uh, keeping that on hand. Another thing that's nice to have is a pair of tweezers. If you've ever tried to get a splinter out of the finger of a child, you will know how fun that is. Uh, but it's definitely the worst thing in the world to have a splinter in your finger and not have a tweezers around. So definitely recommend those. Um, tweezers are another thing that you can use the alcohol pads to clean off after you're done using them. Um, eye drops are also another great thing to have on hand and I think the best thing about getting them at Dollar Tree is they come in these tiny little cute packages so you're not wasting a ton of them if you don't use them all um, but these are just like regular lubricant eye drops something like this is really great if you just have a little bit of eye irritation or say you're outside you get dust or dirt in your eye and you just need to treat it at home again if you've ever tried to put eye drops in a child you will know what the fun <laughs> what fun that is uh zero stars do not recommend and then i like that they had these little containers of vaseline or petroleum jelly at the dollar tree some people actually recommend using this for cuts versus the neosporin i personally just like to have this on hand for um, like minor burns or just like minor irritation or chapped dry skin um, like for example my kids are in swim and so they are constantly getting dry skin no matter how much lotion we put on them and petroleum jelly can just be used for so many things and I actually like that this is kind of in a small container um, because when has everyone anyone ever gone through a whole container of Vaseline I have no idea maybe maybe some people have um, but this is also great to use on chapped lips as well but I just love the size of this container so the next container we have here is GI meds GI stands for gastrointestinal this is something my husband will probably make fun of me for he'll be like why didn't you just say stomach medications it's like I can't my nurse brain can't say that so anyway GI meds okay so we have in here some Tums or some antacid I like keeping these on hand I'm not really someone who gets heartburn frequently but sometimes you know you or your kids can have a little bit of upset stomach something like this um, can be helpful just a couple of these and a glass of water lay down go to bed wake up new <laughs> the next morning but that's something that is just nice to have on hand I think one thing that I also keep on hand is Pepto-Bismol but they didn't have that at Dollar Tree so that's something else you might consider um, Alka-Seltzer is another thing that it can actually be used for actually it, it can be used for both heartburn and upset stomach or also headache and body aches 
this particular one does have aspirin in it so just be careful with that um, aspirin has a lot of different contraindications in terms of who should and shouldn't take it so always check with your doctor or your healthcare provider on that um, I know that some people use this a lot for heartburn and it really helps them so I think it's just something you know useful to keep on hand there's only four tablets in here so again we're not going for longevity with this kit just stuff to keep on hand in case we need it and then i also have a couple boxes of um, both emodium and these laxative tablets so i wouldn't say that this is something that a lot of people would use frequently but something like this is nice to have on hand because when you need it you need it um, this is bicycotal which is a sort of like a I don't know, like a stimulant laxative. Another alternative to this might be milk of magnesia. And then also Imodium is something nice to have on hand. Um, just be careful with Imodium. Sometimes when people have stomach bugs, I think that they are, and this is just my opinion only, I think they are too quick to take antidiarrheal medication. Um, and it is actually a lot of times the symptom of diarrhea is your body's way of trying to get rid of whatever made you sick in the first place um, but there can be issues with dehydration and there are just a lot of issues so obviously consult with your healthcare provider but modium is something nice to have on hand because obviously you don't want to have to be running to the store when you're having those type of issues okay so next up we have calamine lotion and this reminds me of one thing when i had chicken pox when i was a child uh thanks lord we have a vaccine for chicken pox now and so my children did not have to endure that but calamine lotion is a great thing to keep on hand for rashes and I think probably the most common use for this is poison ivy or poison oak um, where we live there is a very like wooded area behind our house and so Adam has had to use this before when he's been out there like cutting down brush and mowing and things like that so um, again, just something nice to have on hand. Something else that's nice to have on hand that I wasn't able to find at Dollar Tree is aloe vera gel or sun relief gel. I personally like the aloe vera gel that has lidocaine in it. I think it works really well. That's something else I would recommend keeping on hand, but again, I couldn't find it at the Dollar Tree. Um, and then we have some children's medications. So you may be able to leave these out if you don't have kids. The other thing too is that Dollar Tree does not have, or at least my Dollar Tree did not have any chewable medications. So if that's something that you prefer your kids to have, then you might have to go to Walmart or a different store to get that. But I always think it's obviously nice to keep Tylenol on hand. This is obviously generic acetaminophen. Always, always follow your pediatrician's instructions when you are dosing children with acetaminophen. Um, acetaminophen overdose can be very dangerous, so please, please follow all the instructions from your pediatrician. If you cannot figure out how to calculate the dosage that they need, there are calculators online, so definitely use those. But something like this, you cannot not have this on hand when you have kids because I can't tell you how many times, you know, they wake up in the middle of the night with a fever and this comes in uh, very handy and then another thing that is really nice to keep on hand is children's Benadryl I actually liked the the chewable Benadryl that you can get at Walmart However, they didn't have that at Dollar Tree So the liquid works just as well. You can use this for like minor Allergic reactions obviously if your child is having a severe allergic reaction You definitely want to seek medical treatment for just like minor hives or something like that You know your pediatrician might recommend using Benadryl and it's really nice to have this on hand It can also just be used used you know as an antihistamine for allergies um, it normally will make them sleepy so unless they're like staying home from school and not doing anything I wouldn't recommend giving them this in the middle of the day okay another thing to keep on hand is um, well this is a generic version of Robitussin um, another name for this is also Delsum which they have at Walmart or Walgreens but it's always nice to keep a cough suppressant on hand this one just happens to be both a cough suppressant and an expectorant, which means that it not only helps bring up the phlegm, but also helps stop cough as well. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've had to use the cough syrup on my kids. This particular one is definitely not a quote children's cough syrup. Most of medications for kids are dosed by weight. 
So definitely make sure you know how much your child weighs. And like I said, ask your pediatrician for any dosing instructions. Um, but this obviously works well for adults who need cough medicine too. Okay, so I have some kind of like fever and pain relieving medicines here. This one is naproxen. This only has 10 tablets in it. Um, what we personally use naproxen for here in our house is mostly like back or joint pain. Um, other than that, I don't really use it for much of anything. I believe it can be used for fever, but I've personally never used it for that. Um, so that's something you might consider keeping on hand. Um, I was also able to find, well, okay, here's the thing. This says nighttime sleep aid. However, this is Benadryl. If you look at the label, it's diphenhydramine, 25 milligrams, which is Benadryl. I always like to keep this on hand because again, you can use it, you know, for adults as a sleep aid. Um, you can also use it for like minor allergic reactions, or you can use it as an antihistamine. So that's something um, that's nice to keep on hand. And actually the active ingredient in, or ingredients in Tylenol PM is both Benadryl and Tylenol. So if you combine those two together, that's actually Tylenol PM, which brings me to my next medicine, which is acetaminophen. 500 milligrams um, again with Tylenol be very sure that you are following the dosing guidelines for that and not exceeding those it can cause liver damage and that has been well documented before so please be careful sometimes what I'll do especially um, not just for kids but for adults too for fevers is you can alternate um, both Tylenol and ibuprofen um, depending on obviously the situation but Tylenol is always something nice to keep on hand too, just for headaches. Um, actually, it was, it's kind of funny now that I think about this because when I was a kid, I don't think we ever had chewable medicines and I don't ever remember having like liquid medicines. My dad, I remember him taking Tylenol, crushing it up and putting it in a spoonful of grape jelly <laughs> and having me eat it when I had a fever. So yeah, I mean, if you don't have the liquid meds, that's all, <laughs> that's all you can do. Um, ibuprofen is another pain reliever slash fever reducer. Um, some people can't take ibuprofen because of, you know, GI issues or contraindications. So just make sure that you take that into account. However, this is something I would recommend keeping in your first aid kit. And then aspirin is another one of those things. I kind of hesitated to put this in here because I sort of feel like people don't really use aspirin a lot anymore. Um, some people do, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's just one of those things you should really follow what your doctor says. So I did include it in here, but again, it's something that I think is less commonly used now. Okay, the next thing we have here is a menthol patch. These are basically like icy hot patches. Um, there are two of them in here and they're kind of larger ones for either your back or your shoulders or your neck. I always think this is something nice to keep on hand because if you have a neck sprain or a back sprain, um, it's just something that helps kind of topically to relieve pain. I personally prefer the ones that have both menthol and lidocaine in them, but you can't get those. At least I couldn't find them at my Dollar Tree. However, like I said, if you're just kind of making one of these kits to get you through, this is something that is definitely a great deal. Um, oh, I thought there were two in here, but I guess there's just one large medicated patch. So I did include that. And then I think also every first aid kit or every person actually should have disposable gloves in their house, um, especially if you ha are, you know, are treating someone that's bleeding. I mean, just to clean up messes, everyone needs gloves, right? So I would recommend getting the vinyl gloves. They also have the latex gloves at Dollar Tree. I would not recommend those just because so many people have latex allergies, but I think these are a great deal. You get actually four pairs of gloves for just a dollar, so I think that's fantastic. A couple other things I wanted to point out that I'm not including in this kit but were available at my Dollar Tree are these mini portable first aid kits. So I think these are a great idea for travel and they're also just a great deal. This particular one has a carrying case and it includes um, little bandages and knuckle bandages. It also includes gauze pads and alcohol prep pads. So really, really cool. That's something that would be good either for your purse or travel. And then I also found this one at the checkout. Um, this one says first aid portable pack. And so there are alcohol swabs in here. Um, different bandages, different size bandages. So definitely a couple things too if you're looking for uh, either travel items or on the go. Okay, so just a couple more things that I didn't address that I would probably recommend keeping but I could not find at Dollar Tree are Mydol. 
Um, Vicks VapoRub is something that I have used on my kids quite frequently when they've had colds and congestion over the years. Um, I did mention the thermometer. Again, I'll link uh, an inexpensive one down below. Another thing you might consider keeping on hand is some bandage scissors. Um, they did have scissors at Dollar Tree, so you know if you wanted a dedicated pair of scissors to keep in your first aid kit, that's something you could purchase there. Another thing would be like a compression dressing or maybe some, we call them ABD pads in, in nursing and in the hospital. It's basically like five by nine absorbent compress dressings. I actually do have those in our first aid kit here at home, um, just in case there's like a profuse amount of bleeding. Another thing would be, um, I don't know what it's actually called, but we call it Coban. It's basically that, um, you, that bandage, that sticky uh, elastic bandage that they use to wrap your arm after you get labs drawn, that can be helpful to have on hand too because of, um, you know, if you needed to compress something because of bleeding. Um, but other than that, you know, most of the things that you need, you can find at Dollar Tree, which I think is fantastic. So I do hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know if this was helpful in the comments down below. Again, I'll have the list of items down there if you want to check that out as well. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.